आपलं हॅलो एव्हरीबडी यस 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 प्लीज गो अहेड hi welcome everybody uh, welcome uh, to the webinar today uh, please give us uh, some minutes to be able to start <laughs> Well, I'm back online and I can only you can only hear my voice, so you're going to have to put up my fabulous picture. No, it's it's fine. So, We are online as well. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, are we ready to start? Perfect. So welcome everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to the webinar of today. It's a live webinar about the uh, signing ceremony for the Green Recovery, Energy Transition and Gender Diversity from Canada to MENA region. This is a very singular event as we have today among us uh, Her Excellency uh, Marcy Grossman, the Ambassador of Canada to the UAE, who uh, will give us the welcome note. Uh, the floor is yours, uh, Your Excellency. Thank you so much and uh, I hope you're putting up my <coughs> fabulous headshot because uh, thanks to the perils of technology I cannot get my um, camera to work so I really apologize to everyone uh, but uh, allow me to uh, just say a few words if I may. First of all a uh, very good morning, good evening and good afternoon to everyone who's joining us here in the UAE. Uh, from my home and native land in Canada and everywhere and anywhere you are around the world today. I understand that there are over 500 people from 45 countries registered for this momentous occasion. So with that, I wish you welcome, bienvenue and marhaba. It is such a great honor and thrill to be with you today to celebrate this brand new partnership between Canada's Women in Renewable Energy Organization, WIRE, and the UAE-based Clean Energy Business Council's Women in Clean Energy Group, or WICE. This partnership has been making in the making for months, if not more. And to be honest with you, the timing of it could not really be more perfect than culminating in this very moment in history. My involvement in the journey began when I had the pleasure of meeting WIRE CEO Joanna Osawe just over a year ago, she and I were co-presenters on a panel on women doing business in the MENA region at the Canada Arab Business Council in Toronto, uh, spring 2019. And as soon as I met Joanna and, and saw her passion and her vision, I knew that I wanted to bring the WIRE model to the UAE. And I really couldn't be more excited that WIRE has found and paired up with such a powerful partner in WISE. Based in the UAE, like WIRE, WISE has constituents all across the region. So it's really a perfect match, and I'm very happy about that. So fast forward a year, a pandemic, and a whole myriad of world events, and why does this partnership excite me so much, and why now? And basically, there's two reasons. First of all, I would say timing. I believe there is no important time than right now to be focusing on our social and economic recovery. And this begins with women, the she recovery as they are calling it. The disproportionate impact of the COVID crisis on women, whether they are at home, in the workforce, or running their own business. The impact is astounding. 
These issues and our ability to respond is critical to success and progress that women have made in the past 30 or 40 years. So we really need to work together around the world, just as we are doing today with this partnership. And of course, the timing of the focus on clean energy in our economy or the green recovery equally as important. Climate change continues to be one of the greatest challenges of our time. And one thing this pandemic has taught us is to remember Mother Nature. And therefore, there is renewed focus on the environment right now. So by fostering greener, more sustainable economies together, we can help meet collective climate objectives and support our economy at the same time. Canada, like the UAE, is engaged in fostering clean energy, energy solutions, protecting biodiversity, and safeguarding our ecosystems. And the second reason I am so excited to be here tonight is because of the amazing country that I get to represent, Canada, in this amazing country, the UAE. If you did not already know, Canada is a leader in clean tech. Our clean tech industry is home to more than 800 companies, over 90% of which are SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises. And the UAE is a country that is looking for more and more clean tech solutions to address their country's priorities. One small recent example where we have witnessed this was, what was at the Abu Dhabi World Future Energy Summit. A company called Just Vertical from Canada, a vertical farming SME, won the Public Choice Award from the Climate Innovation Exchange Program. And there is so much more that has to be done and can be done. Canada is a nation of traders. We have no choice. We are, the, we are a large landmass. In fact, the second largest country in the world after Russia. And at the same time, a very small population, about 37 million. In relative terms, that's one-tenth the population of our neighbor to the south. So like the UAE, we have to trade and partner for our economies to thrive. And both of our countries have identified international trade as a hallmark of our economic recoveries. The good news is that Canadian clean tech SMEs are more likely than all SMEs in Canada to export and engage in international business activities. In 2017, clean tech SMEs sold more than all other Canadian SMEs combined, both nationally and internationally. And the government of Canada is committed to moving the dial on gender equality and engaging more SMEs in trade. We, like the UAE, believe that empowering women and girls makes families and countries more peaceful and more prosperous. So increasing the participation of women entrepreneurs in global commerce is at the core of Canada's inclusive trade agenda. Through our extensive network, including both of our offices here in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, Canada's Trade Commissioner Service is committed to working with business and industry stakeholders to offer key services that will help Canadian businesswomen in international markets. I could go on, uh, but this is not my night, and, um, and you can't see my excitement. <laughs> uh, it's really your night. So with that, I would just like to give a special thanks to four people. Gabrielle Jabor, our Trade Commissioner for Clean Tech in the UAE, or Gabby as we call him, when I came back from meeting Joanna last year and after seeing all the amazing things that were going on at Mazdar City, I passed the baton to Gabby and he did not disappoint. And he worked really hard to make this match happen and I really want to thank him for that. And of course, thank you to Joanna Osawe, President and CEO of WIRE, Sophie Collette, Managing Director for CEBC, and Mahari Main garcia Vice Chairwoman of WISE for not just organizing the signing ceremony and the webinar, but really for going on this journey with us together. We expect great things and we are sure you will deliver. And finally, I just wanna wish everyone here today a good health, a great success in your business activities, and thank you again for participating. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, this has been a very, very, uh, Passionate that we can feel the excitement, although we cannot see it. <laughs> we, um, Thank you. We are to have you uh, given uh, the welcome note and to kick start uh, the webinar. To tell us more today about this, the actors of this partnership, uh, we welcome Mahari Main Garcia, the vice chair of CEBC and partner at Dentons. Uh, Mahari, the floor is yours.
Um, Heidi, I think you're still on mute. Okay, can you see my slides or because right now I can only see yes. that works. We can see the slides and we can hear you as well. Okay, because I can't see them. Okay, that's it now. Okay, <laughs> little technical glitch. Uh, so good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And, and thank you very much, uh, Marcy, for that lovely introduction. And we too are very, very excited uh, by what we have ahead. I'm just going to give a very brief introduction to uh, the Clean Energy Business Council and to WISE to get us started. Uh, so what is uh, CBC? CBC is a, a non-profit organisation and we operate across the whole spectrum of the clean energy sector. So from utility scale to distributed energy, to energy efficiency, to uh, energy vehicles uh, and so on. So right across the whole sector. And we aim to work on behalf of our members really to promote the uptake of clean energy across the MENA region, so the Middle East and North Africa. And we work together both with uh, private sector members and public sector. We have a lot of support with uh, a lot of members in both uh, private and public sector. As part of that, one of the things that we, we do is we publish papers, white papers. We also organize a number of events, uh, such as webinars, but uh, traditionally, obviously, a lot more in terms of conferences and seminars and so on. And we have, I'm sorry, it's not showing, there we go. Back of page. Uh, over 120 members, and those members span the entire energy spectrum once again. So from a traditional renewables in terms of generators uh, and so on, and uh, energy efficiency, which is really a, a big growth area, particularly uh, where we are in the Middle East. Green mobility, uh, we have a very strong uh, uptake in that side of it, as well as general stakeholders. And uh, we also have a number of consultancy, legal, finance and investment firms. And we also have the benefit of a number of partners. Uh, and I'm very pleased today to add wire to that. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see, uh, we have added wire to the list. And uh, we have the support of a number of nonprofit organizations as well as a number of government entities and also uh, those working in the media. So we have a lot of support. And I think because we share so many common goals and working together with wire, we hope to really build upon that. Within CBC, because we cover such a broad spectrum, what we've done is we've sort of focused on some key areas. So we have three working groups, one on sustainable climate finance, one on energy efficiency, and one on uh, future mobility. And I could probably talk an hour on each of those, but today we're going to be focusing on one of our programs. So we have two uh, main programs, Women in Clean Energy and the Schools Program. So today we're going to be looking at Women in Clean Energy or WISE. So what is Women and Clean Energy? Well, it's a, a platform that we have established within the framework of the CBC, and it's to bring together women to network with other like-minded professionals in the clean and renewable energy sector. And one of the things that we do is we organize training and technical seminars, and it's for women working in the industry. And when I say women working in the industry, it's right across the entire employment spectrum within the industry. So we're looking at management, government, engineers, business developers, uh, finance uh, departments, banks, consultants, lawyers, and even graduates. So really it's to bring together women with that commonality, with that interest in the sector, who are working in the sector, aiming to work and progress in the sector, and make sure they then have that platform trained to get additional training and to network. And one of the things that we want to try and do is to promote career progression of the women that work together with us and participate in our events. Part of that as well is that we've uh, recently established a business mentoring program and I'll talk a little bit about more about that shortly. And we even go as far as to uh, encourage university students to participate in WISE with an aim to entering the sector once they graduate. In terms of activities, we have a, a large annual summit uh, and we really uh, are very proud of that because we managed to invite a number of leading industry experts to that. And I think it really does promote not just 
information sharing, but it brings together that entire spectrum of women that I talked about. We also have a number of conferences and seminars and of course increasingly webinars in the current climate. I've mentioned already our mentorship program and we also are, uh, benefit from a spotlight by being part of CBC in the monthly newsletter. But why are we here today? Well, today we're here to formalize and to formally launch and celebrate the collaboration between WISE and WIRE, Women in Renewable Energy. And I really think by bringing our two organizations together and collaborating, we really have the benefit of capitalizing on the knowledge that we have, the resources that we have, and the networks that we each have within our respective organizations. And that working together, we will be able to achieve the common objectives that we have and really promote the role and recognition of women in the clean and renewable energy sector. I think we'll, our cooperation will lead to a, you know, a greater platform to raise awareness, not just of challenges, but of opportunities for women in the sector. And undoubtedly will provide a clear platform for information and knowledge sharing. Working together, our combined organizations will benefit from being able to you know, promote best practices in the sector. And of course, uh, as part of that collaboration, we hope to be able to organize joint initiatives and events. So today is hopefully the first of many to come. And, and why do we need that collaboration? And in fact, why are WISE and why are important? And I just wanted to talk just for a couple of minutes on this point because it's quite close to my heart. And really it's, you know, the, the clean energy and the renewable energy sector does provide, I would say, a greater opportunity for women. So when you look at the conventional energy sector and oil and gas and so on, you only have around a fifth of the positions held by women. In the renewable energy sector, it's around a third. So there's a, a big difference sitting there. And so I do think that that means there are clear opportunities, but there are challenges. And I think that's why our organizations are so important and why our collaboration is going to be so important going forward. Those challenges in terms of not just getting women to enter this, uh, the sector, but also to maintain that participation in the sector, I think is critical. And progression is also very important. It might be easy to enter the sector, but we need to make sure that women have the opportunity to progress. Education and training, obviously, you know, it's still important and, and critical that women have opportunities and encouraged to undertake, for example, STEM subjects. But it's also important that women have access to training, for example, in relation to management in order to secure the progression that I just mentioned. Employment and workplace regulations. Of course, things generally like addressing issues such as wage, gap, wage gaps and parental, paid parental leave are important. But we also need to look at uh, training and diversity and inclusion. And of course, that doesn't just relate to women. It's across the, the sector in terms of ensuring that there's no bias and ensuring that we also look at things like unconscious bias. Career progression and management. Do we need to have quotas and things like boards and so on? That's something that you know a number of uh, firms have committed to. Uh, but also just looking at companies taking it upon themselves perhaps to have things like gender specific programs to help, as I said, to maintain that participation and also to ensure that there is that progression. And cultural and social bias. It is there and we're all guilty of it in one way or another. But I think one interesting statistic that I came across was that in terms of equal pay, uh, almost two thirds of men believe that there's equal pay between the gender groups, whereas less than a third of women believe that. So, the, you know, whether factually uh, it is correct or not, uh, there is clearly a very, very different perspective for men and women. And we do need to address those concerns. And the last point, I'm conscious of time that I just wanted to address, is that our organizations really bring together two of the UN Sustainable Development Goals in terms of SDG 5 and 7, gender equality and affordability in clean energy. And, you know, I think those are, are really central to what we do in terms of promoting both gender equality and at the same time, accelerating and promoting clean energy and with that affordable energy. Weiss and Wire, I think, individually, but together and collaborating together really well and, you know, pro provide a clear platform to facilitate knowledge transfer, to organize events across our organizations and across continents, 
uh, and to allow for networking and gender specific opportunities. So I'm really very, very excited about the collaboration between our organisations. Just before I, I finish, I just wanted to mention uh, one thing, and I, I already touched on it, that we've launched a, a mentorship programme within WISE. And we've already put out a call to mentors and we're now launching our call to mentees. And we're tar targeting women who are sort of really sort of more around uh, junior to middle management. And it's really to address those points when I mentioned about uh, maintaining women participation in the sector, but also allowing for their progression. And so we have a pilot program that's going to take place this year for 12 months. But we really do hope that that's something that we're going to be able to carry forward. And ultimately, it would be fantastic if we're also able to, you know, in the longer term, be able to cooperate with WIRE on that mentorship programme. So that, that's it from me. Uh, I think we're going to hand over to WIRE now to uh, introduce WIRE. Exactly. Uh, thank you very much, Mahari. And effectively, uh, the mentorship programme is very interesting and very important. Uh, let, let us uh, continue with the uh, wire and please uh, know that you are able to ask any question uh, you want to in the panel. Um, let me please introduce Joanna Osawi, the Chair, President and CEO of Women in Renewable Energy, WIRE, uh, who will give us a presentation about uh, WIRE. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. Um, first and foremost, uh, I would like to thank uh, Her Excellency Marcy Grossman, Ambassador of Canada to the UAE. A uh, big thank you to CBC's Women in Clean Energy for partnering with WIRE, Women in Renewable Energy for today's live webinar and signing ceremony. Welcome to our distinguished guests, colleagues and friends to the Green Recovery Energy Transition and Gender Diversity live webinar. Today marks a historic day in the signing ceremony between WIPES and WIRE. As together, we will be able to continue to deliver a solid message on gender diversity and inclusion. Our purpose is very simple. Our mission is to advance the role and recognition of women in the energy sector. Oops, apologies here. Um, I'm going to provide you a little bit more details in regards to programming about WIRE. We actually launched in 2013 in Toronto. We are a national organization in Canada from the East Coast to the West Coast. Some of our programming includes networking events, which features women in the energy sector that are subject matter expert. The discussion focuses on building skills and networks for jobs and roles in the energy sector. WIRE meetups present a welcoming and a casual opportunity to meet peers, share ideas, opportunities, and educate colleagues about projects and initiatives of the of interest to the group. We also provide capacity field trips. These field trips are to increase literacy across a wide range of applications related to the energy sector. Our field trips are an educational platform for all. As most people do not, not, do not know the differences between a transmission line or a distribution line. Speed mentoring and speed interviewing. Our speed mentoring sessions help students and new professionals entering the energy field to receive mentorship and feedback from experienced industry professionals with established careers in the energy sector. Student bursary programs for participation in industry conferences. We are pleased to award student bursaries to women in colleges or university students who attend conferences throughout the year. The bursaries support women to attend conferences, sessions, seminars on current energy topics and issues, view state-of-the-art technology at exhibitions, meet professionals in the energy sector, and connect with employers to explore opportunities for internships and permanent positions. We also provide a blog of our champions and the leader and leaders in the energy sector where we post online as well as on our website and on our monthly newsletters to celebrate the champions in our industry. I'm very proud of the Women of Distinction Award. 
where WIRE recognizes and celebrates professional women working in the energy sector who go above and beyond business as usual. Currently, under the Women of Distinction Award, we have Women of the Year Award, Women of Wind, Women of Solar, Women of Hydro, Women of Engineering, and we are currently working for a second year in a row with NRCAN and C3E on the Clean Energy Empowerment and Education Award. And we will be la launching this year the Indigenous Women in Leadership Award. All the award nominees stand out throughout excellence in areas such as leadership, policy, advocacy, technical advancement, R&D, project development, community engagement, and increase of adoption of renewable technologies. Volunteering and or being a role model contributing to the advancement of women in the energy sector. This upcoming uh, September, we are rolling out in Ontario and throughout Canada, as well as our international partners or international countries, a student ambassadorship program. So this will become upcoming in the fall 2020. So as discussed, where is WIRE? Well, we are throughout Canada. We are also in the middle region in Turkey, Jordan, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and now in the UAE. WIRE will continue to enter the international markets where we are invited. WIRE does not enter markets unless we are invited, welcomed, and requested. Our WIRE leadership team comprises of our board of directors. So myself, Joanna Osawe, President and CEO of WIRE. I also work at DMC Power as Global Business Development Manager. We have Aisha Bukhari, our Vice President, who will be speaking very shortly, and she works at Mars Discovery as the Senior Manager. Sarah Montour, our Secretary, as well as the Executive Director for the Aboriginal Apprenticeship Board of Ontario. And finally, Julia Cushing, our Treasurer, who is a Senior Environmental Planner at Savanta. We also have an advisory committee that advises and supports the board of directors. As stated, WIRE only enters countries where we are requested and welcomed. We are believers of being local. Be global, but act local. Meaning that programs that work in Canada may not apply in different countries and vice versa. Therefore, we need to be able to assess the different needs in different countries, whether we need to develop new programs or use the current platforms that we currently have. WIRE is a supporter of the Equal by 30 campaign, which you will hear more from our panelist, Annette Hollis from NRCAN, Natural Resources Canada. The Equal by 30 campaign is a public commitment by public and private sector organizations to work towards equal pay, equal leadership, and equal opportunities for women in the sector by 2030. Equal by 30 asks companies and governments to endorse principles, then take concrete action to accelerate the participation of women in the clean energy sector and close the gender cap. WIRE is also proud to partner with EHRC Electricity Human Resources Canada, and we are an ambassador to the Leadership Accord on Gender Diversity, which is a public commitment by employers, educators, unions, and governments to promote the values of diversity and inclusion within their organizations. WIRE works with the organization in different capacities, and these are our government partners, sponsors, and of course, partners. WIRE, partners, WIRE partnerships are extremely important, such as today's ceremony signing of the MOU between CBC's WISE and WIRE. When WIRE partners with an organization, it must be a win-win for both organizations. If it is a win for one and a loss for the other, it is actually a loss for our community. However, all of our partnerships are extremely important, important and we continue to recognize that only together will we close the gender gap. I'm absolutely thrilled to officially partner with CBC's WISE Women in Clean Energy, as I know that we will be able, again, to solidify our message together and really work closely together. To join the WIRE committee, please visit uh, us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, or Twitter. Again, a huge thank you to Her Excellency Marcy Grossman, Ambassador of Canada to the UAE. Thank you to CBC's Women in Clean Energy for partnering with WIRE. 
and for today's live webinar and signing ceremony. Thank you to all and wishing you all the very best. Thank you very much, Joanna, for introducing, uh, for such a comprehensive introduction and introducing WIRE. Uh, we leave the floor now to our four panelists after introducing both partners, WISE and WIRE. Let's uh, introduce uh, Annette Olas, who is uh, the manager uh, natural resources of Natural Resources, resources Canada sorry, and chair of the International Clean Energy Education and Empowerment, the C3E initiative, who will be speaking of uh, Equal by 30 campaign. The floor is yours, Annette. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm just uh, taking a moment to try and share my screen. It doesn't seem to want me to do that. Uh, just give me one moment. It goes to show no matter how many times you test these things out, you can still uh, experience difficulties on the moment. I can, of. I can share to my screen if you want. Anita. Okay. Why don't you do that, uh, Ahmed, and I'll, I'll get started with, with speaking. I know it, it might take you a moment. Thank you for that, Ahmed. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, you know, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Um, it is such a pleasure to be joining all of you here uh, today. Uh, it's a great honor uh, for me, and I'd just like to say congratulations um, to both WIRE and the CBC's Weiss uh, for uh, coming together in, in what is such a critical partnership for, for the two regions. I, I'm coming here today wearing a, a couple of different hats. Um, I do work for uh, the Government of Canada, Natural Resources Canada, uh, in the low carbon energy sector, uh, of course, focusing on, on gender related uh, initiatives in the sector. Um, I'm going to be speaking to you today uh, about a couple of initiatives that I am very proud to be attached to. Um, I am the chair of the, the Clean Energy Education and Empowerment Initiative, or C3E International for short, um, and play a strong role in advancing um, a campaign called Equal by 30 that, uh, that uh, Joanna aptly mentioned um, to advance the participation of women in the sector. Uh, and, you know, these initiatives have very common goals, of course, with, with both WIRE and, and WISE. Um, and, you know, I, I sometimes get the comment that, um, you know, oh, it's just a, you know another gender-related initiative. Um, and, and what I have to say to that is that um, we all have common goals, um, and the more that we partner together, and the more that we work together um, to amplify our voices um, and really get the message across um, that it's important to advance gender equality in the sector, the more we'll be able to move the dial because we still haven't done so um, to the uh to the level that we would we would like to so that so we are all in this together and we we need these initiatives um uh that have common goals uh so maybe next slide uh, Ahmed, if you might, don't mind I'll, I'll first uh talk to you about um the c3e um which is a, a global initiative um that came about and was launched um, in recognition of the fact that we need to harness all talents um, if we are to achieve our objectives uh, in the clean energy revolution, and really to focus on creating opportunities for women in this sector um, and to close the gender gap. And we're, we're a group of uh, a number of government uh, countries uh, that work together um, to achieve these goals. Um, we're a, a growing number. Uh, and of course, we also work with, with the private sector and, and other organizations uh, such as yourselves. Next slide. Um, you know, why does C3E exist? Um, why, do, why do any of our initiatives exist? Uh, I think the numbers really speak for themselves. Um, you know, we know that increasing um, gender equality uh, within our organizations, um, it, it achieves better results. Um, there's there's a real bottom line, and you know, aside from the you know, it's it's the right thing to do. Um, it, it just makes good um, economic and environmental sense uh, to to be doing so. Next slide, please. Uh, so what are, what are we doing in C3E to, to advance our, our goals and to advance participation of women? 
Um, so we have a number of uh, work streams um, that um, you know we uh, we have resurrected to uh, to achieve our goals. Um, we have a data collection uh, uh, work stream um, that is is actually we think is is very critical um, to advancing the understanding of of the makeup of women in the sector. Um, and, and I think we all know that if we have better data. Um, we can make more informed decisions uh, and, and convince both policymakers and industry um, that there is a really need uh, to act. Um, we also have uh, what we call an ambassador and a mentorship program. It's a cadre of, um, of uh, preeminent women working in the sector to uh, working to mentor and share their uh, their experiences with with. Um, young professionals and and girls coming into the to the sector and, and actually I, I forgot to mention at the beginning that that I actually have to leave this this um, this event a little bit early to get to an event uh, that is also related to gender and this specific uh, ambassador program um, which is just you know great I'm filling my day with uh, with a great events um, and great achievements um, we also have an awards and a recognition program that I'll, I'll highlight in a moment and that uh, and that Joanna also mentioned. Um, we have a communications program to um, to really amplify messages around uh, gender equality and, and get the word out. Um, and then also the Equal by 30, the specialized Equal by 30 campaign, which I will I will delve a little bit deeper in a moment. Next slide, Ahmed. <clears throat> um, while we're waiting, I believe it's the, the next slide is about uh, the the awards program. And there, just to mention that we are very, there we go, we're very proud to be partnering with with WIRE. Um, we delivered the with them the, the first uh, C3 International Awards uh, program uh, last year, one to an individual of distinction, um, and then one uh, also to an organization that is paving the way uh, on gender equality. And we, we did that at the, the Clean Energy Ministerial uh, forum in in May of last year, which was held in in Canada in Vancouver, um, and we have also we're in our second year um, and opened up the nominations for a second annual award, um, and those are are currently being evaluated. Now, if we go into the the next slide, um, I, I believe we're going to delve a little bit deeper into what Equal by Thirty is is all about, um, and we got a great introduction from from uh, Joanna on on what this is about, and, and of course, Wire is a, is a very proud partner with us in in this effort. Um, it's a as she mentioned, a, a global uh, commitment by both public and private sector uh, to come together to work towards equal pay, equal leadership, and equal opportunities. Uh, in this sector, and maybe I'll just go to the next slide to delve a little bit deeper. And you know, again, um, just to drive home the point that um, you know this campaign exists um, because the underrepresentation of women is, is still very much a, an issue. Um, we thought we there was an opportunity um, to bring both public and private sector together. Um, to to really uh, drive uh, action in this area, um, we know that we need um, uh, all talent to uh, solve our critical ch uh, challenges in the, in the clean energy uh, transition. And I think the point has also been made that there are a lot of opportunities. And, and just to underscore um, Her Excellency um, point. Um, that you know we couldn't be uh, undertaking this mission at a more critical time. Uh, in, in the world. It is now even more important than ever um, that we work towards a, a green and inclusive recovery and one that does not leave um, women behind. So we, we feel that um, that having these initiatives in place are, are really going to you know, drive, hopefully drive the, this point uh, uh, further. Um, and in Canada, we have been, we have been making this point in the last couple of months um, in, in every global forum that we've, uh, we've had the opportunity to do so. Um, and you know, Equal by 30 um, also uh, is in place um, because it, we believe that we we have a need for establishing industry benchmarks um, for creating tools that help the energy sector become more diverse and inclusive. Next slide, please. And here, I just want to underscore some of our, our achievements uh, over the last couple of years. We're we're very we're very excited. 
um, that, uh, you know, we marked our, our second anniversary of the campaign's launch um, just this past May. Uh, you know, a, a couple of years ago when it was launched, it was a handful of countries and a and handful of companies um, at, a, at a signing ceremony. Uh, it, it wasn't virtual, it was in person at the time, of course. Um, but it was just a small group, and we had no idea where we would where we would be going with this. But we've had a, an incredibly successful journey. Um, we have 12 federal governments um, that have signed on board. Um, last year at the Clean Energy Ministerial, we highlighted um, uh, success stories, and and we have a, a booklet. And um, if anyone is interested in seeing that, um, it, it's it's very well done. Uh, we'd love to share that. Um, and then as we were hitting our second anniversary. We surpassed um, 145 signatures. We're almost at uh, at 150, and so many of those are organizations uh, such as yourselves, um, a, a lot of private sector from all over the all over the world with the, this uh, common pledge. Um, and really, Equal by 30 is um, beyond the numbers has uh, been successful in um, placing this issue on on the agenda of many high level discussions particularly with uh, with um, ministers and CEOs, uh, so those with, with decision-making um, powers. Um, so we've been really success, successful, I'd say, in, in galvanizing action um, and, and working with others to do so. Next slide. We're really excited um, as well to be moving into a whole new phase um, for Equal by 30. Um, we are now establishing a reporting framework um, and a set of baseline metrics to help signatories measure their progress um, against their commitments and, and really advance the goal of campaign and, and maybe most importantly, create um, a baseline of disaggregated data, gender disaggregated data for the energy sector, which is, um, you know, we, we have some numbers, but we, we don't have all of the information we need um, at our fingertips and, and maybe um, most importantly, the, the why. Why um, is uh, the representation so low? Um, so we're, we're very excited to be partnering with an organization to help us establish this reporting framework. They're, they, they are called Diversio, um, and we're just kicking that off um, right now. Next slide. We, um, you know, just, uh, you know, I, why reporting? Um, just a, just a moment here to indicate that, you know, sometimes reporting can feel um, very bureaucratic, it can feel very daunting, um, but we're asking our signatories to, to come along with us so that we, we get at that, that important data, that important information, but also maybe even more important uh, so that we share learnings on interventions that work um we want to build momentum and, and encourage others to to take on take on these actions um to, to really commit to to moving the dial um, we want to really inspire women um to to come and join us in in this sector um because um as, as some of my colleagues have mentioned th there really are uh, opportunities in this sector that are that are exciting and really make a difference in, in the world next slide As he's taking a moment, um, uh, I mean, I think the just to yeah, just to underscore um, kind of visually how many have uh, have come on board with us, um, many different uh, organizations such as yourselves, many different companies, and then many different governments that are that are working to together to advance uh, our common goals on on gender equality. Um, it's it's quite exciting, really, um, how many we we have. Um, that, uh, that are coming along with us um, that are really, um, you know, at all different stages uh, as well. I'd say, you know, of course, uh, some of the organizations that signed on have a mission to uh, advance gender equality. Um, and others are companies um, or organizations that, um, you know, maybe don't know where to start, um, but uh, recognize the importance of, of, of gender equality in their organization. Um, and advancing the participation of women. Um, and so, uh, you know, and then we have some companies that have, um, you know, they are doing quite a lot and this has been an opportunity for them to share with others and to, to really publicly make a statement about what they are doing um, and that they want to improve. So 
Um, so we have quite a, a wide breadth of, uh, of signatories um, that are that are all working together um, on this common goal. And it, it is really quite exciting uh, to see how how many and and the number is growing. Um, and I'm hoping actually with my my last slide um, that I, I've convinced uh, maybe uh, more than a few of you um, that are listening in today um, to to join us in, in this effort. Um, Wire is already on board. Um, hopefully, I get to have a conversation with Weiss uh, sometime soon about uh, potentially uh, joining us in this effort um, and others as well. And, and really, it's, it's quite simple. You endorse the principles. Um, you work to develop measurable commitments. Uh, hopefully, um, once you know, being able to hold up uh, activities that you're already doing in your organization, uh, work to report with us and 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 share um your your commitments globally um and so there's information here on how to get a hold of us if you're interested in in joining us and, and i hope you do uh, again thank you so much um for the opportunity um i i'm always so honored to be among um you know a group of of leaders uh, such as yourselves um and sometimes we can feel a, a bit alone in this uh, in this uh mission um but uh, i feel i feel a lot less so when i when i'm among leaders such as yourself so thank you so much and congratulations again on on this momentous uh, achievement thank you very much uh, Annette Olas, uh, for this great uh, introduction of the equal by 30 campaign it is indeed an amazing campaign i'm in i'm uh, you convinced me it's it's done uh, i heard you are leaving us after this presentation is that correct in just a few moments, yes, to, to get to my next great event. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having time to share this with us. Uh, then we will move uh, in this case to a little question in a poll. We will be asking you a question to the audience and we will appreciate if you can answer. So the question is, are government reactive when it comes to gender equality? Let's give you 20 seconds uh, to react on this. Okay, great. So we have 59% saying yes, uh, that's good, it's positive, but we remain with 41% having the feeling that it's the opposite. So let us discuss later on in the panel uh, how we can change that. Let us now move to Madam Habiba El Marashi, chairperson of Emirates Environmental Group. Uh, who will be presenting to us the role of local and international community in achieving gender diversity and sustainable development in this energy sector. The floor is yours, Madam Habiba. Oh, I, I, I think you are on mute. Yeah. Can you unmute, Ahmed? Yes, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate Clean Energy Business Council for the active role that they have been playing on the regional level to really uh, promote the renewables in the MENA region market and the leadership role that has been exhibited by them and the commitment and perseverance that they have continue to do um, to undertake this uh, uh, very uh, strong uh, task. So um, my slides will be managed and I, will, um, I would like to remove my uh, face and you just hear me as I speak on my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Um, so I would like really to talk about this uh, sector and uh, what is the situation uh, in this sector and really what is the uh, gender diversity in, in this particular uh, sector. If you look at um, the nine uh, sectors, and this is a quick poll that I would like uh, to take it with the audience. 
um, we have, as you can see, as you can see, nine sectors within this particular uh, 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 energy sector. Um, I would like to know, in in the opinion of our listeners and audience, wh what do they think is which one do they think is the most diverse? Um, so, if we can take one minute uh, for this one, please, Ahmed. Sure. People can leave the comments in the chat box with your opinions, please. So it is it at 20 seconds as well, yes? Yes, I think 20 seconds should be enough. Okay, I, I can see here most of the people say number seven. So, unfortunately, we don't have number eight. So yeah, which is number seven is uh, oil and gas. That's absolutely uh, correct. Number seven is the one that is uh, the least, uh, taking one being the most diverse and nine being the least uh, diverse. So, oil and gas, gas is the least uh, diverse of the, of the lot. Despite making up really of 48% of the global uh, labor force uh, and 38% of the workforce in major oil producing nations, women only account for 22% of the labor force in the oil and gas. Uh, this is according to the research that uh, Boston Consulting Group came up with in 19, uh, sorry, 2007. And when you look at uh, uh, these gender gaps in employment, you can see it varies uh, across the different uh, energy subsectors. Um, and in the renewable, it is 32%. Um, and more so, you know, uh, very fewer women reach senior roles, as was mentioned by my colleagues in the previous uh, presentations, than in the broader economy as, as a whole. Uh, another, the second slide, please. And what is further interesting is the types of jobs that are currently carried out by women in this uh, sector. Um, one of the best uh, reports that is out there is by Irina. Um, this report breaks down the data and uh, it notes that women are more likely, yes, to be employed in this sector, but they will only be employed in the lower paid, non-technical um, and administrative um, public relations positions, which accounts for 46% 46 of that. Then in actual technical position, which is only 28% uh, uh, and um, in the managerial and in the policy level making uh, posts, it's uh, 32%. Uh, um, this is in spite of women uh, making up more than 50% uh, of the university students in 144 countries that this uh, survey was uh, undertaken. Um, and this was mentioned by one of my colleagues of um, the challenge of uh, keeping women in this position. Uh, wh why is this a loss to the industry? First of all, oil and gas companies have a smaller number of highly qualified candidates that they can choose from when filling positions, especially in the middle and in the higher ranks, because many um, talented women, I believe, either join the, uh, never join the industry or they drop up out of it prematurely for many, many uh, reasons. Um, the second issue is, uh, is companies miss out on the higher quality of teamwork, um, uh, this, you know, diversity of perspectives, creativity in solving of technical and business problems, that characterizes those with greater percentages of uh, female um, employees. Uh, the third point is the industry's relative lack of uh, gender diversity, uh, particularly as I mentioned in the senior ranks, hurts its reputation amongst women as a career choice. 
Um, so this can add to creating a vicious cycle uh, with the industry finding it uh, more and more difficult to recruit women across the board. Uh, research shows that when you bring women on board, you are bringing new perspectives to the workplace and you are improving collaboration. Uh, I can hear sound in the background. Is everybody hearing me clearly? It's now good, yeah, it was for a second. Yeah, okay. Um, while increasing uh, uh, the number of qualified women in an organization's leadership, it yields better performance, uh, and it, uh, in the, particularly in the context of uh, the energy, engaging women as active agents in employing off-grid renewable energy solution is proven to be um, a, uh, maximizing the socioeconomic benefits, particularly in the, in the third world uh, countries. Uh, next slide, uh, please. Um, let's look at the environmental, economical, and cultural benefits of employing women in the in the in this uh, sector. Um, companies that have women, more women on their board of directors, are more likely to proactively invest in renewable energy and to reduce uh, carbon emissions throughout their value uh, chain. Again, this is a research that is out there. Potential environmental gains have uh, also emerged in government contexts as countries with higher female parliamentary representation are more likely to cut carbon dioxide emission and set aside protected land areas. This is according to UNDP report of 2011. As, uh, as far as economic benefits of engaging women in the energy sector, uh, gender biodiversity is now recognized as a force for uh, did, as a force for uh, economic growth and is considered smart economies uh, according to the World Bank report of uh, 2012. It is also acknowledged that a country's national competitiveness correlates strongly with various metrics of gender equality according to World Bank report of 2012. Um, as far as the um, cultural benefits of women in the energy sector, uh, research suggests that women's participation in groups can lead to more effective and inclusive outcomes. The value to enterprises of investing um, in women also includes enhanced recruitment um, and retention, as well as the creation of a more welcoming and inclusive and accepting working uh, environment. Um, this is, can I have the second screen, please? Thank you. This screen is a bit uh, busy, so let me take you through it uh, step by step. Um, the question is, how likely would you be to do the following? And this was um, um, sent to many uh, companies. And you found that uh, women, more women than men surveyed say they would be willing to take on a role that might advance their development, even if it was not attractive in terms of pay, in terms of location, in terms of immediate impact on their career and on their uh, ad adv career advancement. More women than men also say they would be willing to spend more time or money in order to gain uh, additional qualifications to take an assignment in a diff different functional area of, or country, to accept a lower paying job in order to gain experience, and to have their spouse or partner relocate with them if they were uh, transferred. Yet, we see that there are many biases against women based on their perceived lack of uh, flexibility, uh, when it comes to job, uh, you know, relocation to another country or to a higher position uh, because of these uh, particular reasons. Can I have uh, the second slide, please? Thank you. The percentage of women in the industry's uh, workforce um, drops sharply, uh, particularly, you know, you can see the data shows you um, 
uh, in the middle management it is 25 percent yet it drops to 17 percent only when it reaches to the uh, senior level uh, uh, stages although men and women start on an equal uh, footing you see that rarely women reach to the top of the uh, organization now so what's the reason for that men especially in those senior positions attribute the phenomena largely to a shortage of qualified can i go back to the slide can i go back please to the slide no i want the slide before this please thank you so this assessment is probably uh, accurate uh, among women who have spent many years in the industry and might otherwise be considered suitable candidates uh, for promotion to senior uh, management many have failed to accumulate the critical experiences that their male counterpart uh, colleagues have managed to do so so even among women who are still at the company after 15 or 20 years the odds of lending um, a senior executive job are small which is less than 20 percent of these positions so these are all um, uh, global researches that have uh, put these data across us now i will go to the second slide please so in the oil and gas no matter how powerful this sector is the, the 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 speed or the level of growth of including women in this sector and empowering them is not growing as per the other uh, sectors um, uh, more so in the renewable uh, sector this is an issue that needs to be discussed more thoroughly it needs to be pushed all the time on the agenda of the boards um, on the agenda of the governments uh, in decision making positions um, again i will go to the research from irena international renewable energy uh, uh, agency they say global employment in the renewable energy sector grew by nearly 4 million jobs in six years from 7.1 in 2012 as you can see to 11 million in 2018 and they predict by 2050 42 million uh, jobs will be created in this uh, sector so this is a very strong platform of opportunity for for females to be mentored to be trained to be encouraged guided to enter this uh, uh, sector um, of course it will be true that the demand for skilled experienced workers is uh, going to go up and this is why it is so important for the industry uh, to provide uh, platforms to embrace um, this diversity at an early stage to create different platforms uh, training mentorship guiding uh, holding hands partnering with universities and colleges to ensure that it is attractive to the uh, female uh, students uh, we already noted that compared to 22 percent women in the oil and gas industry this representation is already uh, higher now it shows that it is 32 percent in the renewable uh, energy but still we are way behind and this needs to be um, given full attention and support can i take the other slide please so take going from the oil and gas general to coming to the specific to um, renewables what are the barriers that are out there um, to prevent uh, women from being attracted or finding the right opportunities or taking this as a career path um, they are attracted to this but still encounter uh, numerous uh, obstacles um, from lack of equal access to these educational uh, platforms to the training required to the mentoring um, to the finances uh, and that is a very important uh, issue uh, professional networks that can embrace them and, and support them um, to the glass ceiling that are in many uh, companies and institutions uh, 
There was a research as well, you know, when the uh, respondents were asked about these perceived barriers, the two most common responses related to perceptions of gender roles and the persistence of certain cultural and social uh, norms were the main, uh, seen as the main obstacles in this uh, issue. Um, the bad news actually is that as social perceptions, these challenges are prevalent not only in the renewable, it's in, in all industries and cannot be solved just by an individual company. This has to turn into a cultural issue. This has to become a concerted multilateral uh, platforms, uh, holding hands, learning from each other, uh, changing of attitudes on a large scale, a scale and which we are seeing it at the moment is inherently uh, slow. Uh, but there is a silver lining. Many um, international organizations have begun and are creating a discussion platform and opportunities. And I believe this platform this evening is one such uh, place where this issue is being uh, discussed. But it needs to be done more frequent and it needs to be more inclusive. Um, and it uh, brings on board as well our uh, male uh, colleagues to uh, to discuss this issue in all uh, perspectives. Can I have the second uh, slide, please? Okay. Um, I'm very happy to uh, note that in the UAE, alhamdulillah, the government has taken this issue very uh, seriously and uh, quite a few of our universities uh, uh, have offered uh, have off, you know, started these uh, undergraduate programs, uh, postgraduate uh, programs, and graduation has already. So the first batch have already graduated, and I hope that the bold uh, young ladies who have gone into that and have taken the trouble to study it and have graduated, that the industry will embrace them, will really open the doors for them, will take them on board in spite of not having experiences and, and, and uh, create those incubators to train them properly to ensure that they are fit uh, for the industry. Um, the local community will have to work to remove cultural, structural, uh, barriers that thwart women's advancement in the workplace and particularly in the energy sector. Um, and this is not only on the local level we are talking about or on the regional level. On the international level, the international community will have to promote the wide range of roles available in the uh, in the industry, from jobs in, enge in engineering to jobs in a supply chain. And this is something that we really find it lacking in our region. You know, uh, one of the weakest links when we come to discuss about corporate social responsibility and sustainability in organization, we find organization know, have, know now how to put their house in order, but they, have, they are yet to understand the role that they have to play in in the wider community and across their supply chains as well. So a concerted effort by governments, by corporations, by the academia, particularly the academia and other stakeholders, whether these are international uh, organizations, um, is very, very important to boost, to boost women's participation in these programs. And it can drive uh, the rate of participation of uh, females in the renewables to a higher level. Um, so there, we ha there has to be an effort to broaden the criteria for inclusion in the in any company's list of high potential uh, candidates. Um, I hope this will be something that UAE can come out as a leader in that uh, field and and uh, really provide the platform where younger graduates, young female graduates, find it very easy uh, to be nicely absorbed into the workforce force without waiting months and months after graduation and then that's where demotivation sets in. Um, so I hope that really we see this to be uh, a game changer in the in the region. I would like to touch the um, uh, you know the message that my colleague uh, mentioned which is absolutely beautiful um, of um, you know the the Equal by 2030, which is an initiative by Canada and uh, Sweden, um, equal opportunity, equal pay and equal leadership. This is uh, the way to go. Really, I would like to end my presentation by reminding everyone that five years ago, 
world leaders came together and uh, uh, signed and committed to deliver um, by 2030. Okay, and uh, particularly, as was mentioned in the earlier presentation, uh, goal number five, which is achieve gender equality and empowerment of women uh, to achieve this by 2030. And one of the most effective ways of achieving, achieving that is really through these uh, simple um, steps, equal opportunity, equal pay and equal leadership, unless um, the multinational uh, take that drastic and bold step of uh, incorporating that and being the trendsetters, um, the small institutions will not do it. So we are, I personally am looking for a multilateral organization and uh, uh, international uh, corporations to be uh, the leaders in, in setting the right uh, platform for that. Um, this was a goal, you know, uh, like a little more than a decade, it was not there. Today it is there and it has been talked about uh, very well. So I think it is, it is um, the right time uh, and I believe that the platform is there. It just needs the concerted effort of uh, everybody. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity um, and thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Madam Hafiba, and thank you for this uh, special and very powerful message of equality that is indeed uh, the end goal of uh, every one of us here today. Uh, let us move. Uh, actually, I need to remind you that we are past of uh, the allocated time for uh, and for a matter of uh, housekeeping. We would appreciate if the coming presentation are slightly shortened a bit to leave some time for uh, a panel discussion. So our third panelist is uh, Aisha Bukhari, the Vice President of WIRE and Senior Manager, uh, Partner uh, Solutions at, um, at uh, Moist Discovery District. She will be talking about uh, an inclusive transition to a clean energy future. Floor, floor is yours, Aisha. Thank you. Thank you, Abla. Um, greetings, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to be here with all of you uh, virtually. Uh, so welcome, uh, marhaba. Next slide, please. Um, so today what I want to do is to talk to you about how we can transition to a clean energy future that is inclusive, not only for women, but for all of us, including other underprivileged groups such as Black, Indigenous, and people for, of color. As many of us know that an energy revolution is underway in which our energy world uh, is moving towards cleaner energy, digital systems, and with a focus on providing customer-centric services. And while it's clear for many of us that uh, this transition is necessary to mitigate the devastating effects of climate change, and that this transition uh, also presents an opportunity for economic recovery during this time of global pandemic, what we often forget to uh, unfortunately ask ourselves is that, is this transition uh, going to be an inclusive one? Next slide, please. So uh, let's talk about uh, diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and, and what do I mean by it? So using Canada as an example, um, as a country, we are incredibly diverse, uh, especially Toronto, where I am from, we are constantly exposed to people who come from different walks of life. However, what we need to recognize is that just because we have diversity in an, in an environment, it does not make it inclusive by default. And for an environment to be inclusive, not only does it need to consist from of people who are coming from diverse backgrounds and all walks of lives, it also needs to support and empower these people so that we can succeed and contribute at our highest potential. And then when we take another step forward and, and think about belonging, uh, belonging is a very fundamental uh, and basic human need. And, and so this feeling of social isolation or, or missing that feeling of being accepted in an environment greatly undermines our ability to function effectively and contribute in our communities as well as our professional environments. And from an organizational perspective, uh, while many organizations do recognize uh, that they need to take steps uh, to address gender diversity and inclusion, often the missing piece uh, is belonging. Next slide, please. So what I want to do uh, is talk about three pathways uh, that can help organizations uh, create environments where employees feel that they can belong uh, and they can bring uh, their whole selves to work. 
Uh, it starts by acknowledgement of intersectionality, spending time and being intentional about creating uh, an organizational culture uh, that, that is inclusive of all, and then creating an environment where leaders and people build each other up. Next slide, please. So the, the first step uh, of really uh, starting to build, building a culture of, of uh, inclusivity and belonging is by starting uh, by that there is starting with this acknowledgement that we have intersectionality uh, in our environment. So as an example, the experience of a white woman uh, in an organization is very much different uh, from that of a black woman uh, that belongs to a LGBTQ plus community. Next slide, please. So once we once we have an organization uh, that kind of has this foundation where uh, technology is being reflected and acknowledged, then the key to success is ensuring that the organizational culture uh, supports it. So there is a very famous saying uh, by Peter Drucker uh, that culture eats strategy uh, for breakfast. And, and if we talk about a very practical example, what that means is uh, uh, I'll share an example of some of the, the interviews uh, that we've conducted through WIRE. And women have uh, told us that they've come back from maternity leaves and found themselves uh, with lowered responsibilities and missed opportunities uh, for promotion. And these women are coming from organizations uh, that commit, that claim that they are committed uh, to gender diversity and equality. So it is reflected in their policies, but does not necessarily uh, translate in their culture. Uh, and that's kind of the missing piece that, that I was mentioning. And I guess in order to essentially start building that culture, there are many different pieces, but it does definitely start uh, by setting the tone at the top uh, where the executives and the top leadership uh, practice these values and lead by example. Next slide, please. Um, finally, uh, we also need to build a culture where we are uh, building each other up as opposed to tearing each other down or, or one-upping each other in the name of competition. Um, and in order, I guess, for us to do that, the, the very first step is for us to have those difficult conversations uh, to talk about the elephant in, in the room. So um, as an example, you know, if you're an individual that does not consume alcohol, how are you supposed to go and hang out with your uh, colleagues after work and network and access the in crowd? Or another example, which I personally find even more troubling, is, is the lack of support uh, that some women show each other. So um, again, sharing some examples of uh, stories that we have heard uh, through WIRE uh, about women who practice selective feminism. Uh, you know, examples where uh, women, women uh, white women in senior white positions go out of their way to mentor and sponsor young white women. But at the very same time, they will ignore or even worse put down other women of color and we have also heard of stories about uh, competition amongst women leading to environments that fuel dishonest behavior and and it's kind of these practices like these uh, that lead lead us uh, to you know seeing environments where we see similar types of people that continue to occupy the c-suite the boardrooms and, and and the management positions and in in my i guess in my opinion the only way for us uh, to move forward uh, is by working together uh, as a team. And then the example that I would like to share with all of you today is, is what you see on the screen. Uh, it's a picture uh, from last year uh, when Raptors, that is uh, Toronto's basketball team, won the NBA championship uh, for the first time in the history of Canada. It was a lot of fun. Uh, some of the best celebrations that I've seen uh, in the city uh, so far, and, and this success and this victory was possible not because of uh, one individual or one superstar on the team, but it was really because of the combination of the players on the team who not only did their own parts, but they also supported each other and lifted each other up in spirits that helped them kind of stay focused and calm through tough games against teams that were full of superstars. Next slide. And I guess my, my key message uh, that I would uh, like to leave everyone with is that, you know, uh, I am not here to tell, you know, that we need that, you know, we need to uh, overhaul an entire organizational culture or meet, we don't have the right strategies or values in place. What I want to tell is that if we acknowledge the value and diversity and inclusion, 
it needs to translate uh, into belonging in, for, in order for an organization um, to, to read the benefit. Um, and then but finally, we need to really unite uh, as a team in order to solve climate change. Um, and you know, I believe that individually we can win games and, and have small su personal successes. But together as a team, uh, we can win championships um, and we really do need a team uh, to solve uh, the biggest challenge that humanity is, is facing now. Uh, so thank you. And, and with that, I will pass it back to Abla. Um, effectively, Aisha, empowered women should always empower women. Uh, it should be the rule uh, in our industry and in every single other industry. So thank you so much, Aisha, for reminding us uh, of this and for describing and suggesting how such inclusion can be implemented. So now we are moving to our fourth, uh, fourth panelist, Florence Fontani, which is the, he's, she's the EVP of Strategy, Communication and ESR at uh, NG, Middle East and, and South Central uh, Asia and Turkey. Thank you uh, and welcome to Florence to take the floor. Florence, I think you are on mute. We cannot hear you. Are now, you all here? Yeah. Ah, yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here with uh, with you. So, uh, the topic is the role of private sector in achieving gender diversity and uh, sustainable development in the energy sector. So. I think it's a huge topic, but I will try to tackle in, uh, in 10 minutes. Uh, so I think that one thing very important is to understand the challenges, because uh, they are key challenges uh, which we must overcome uh, before we can achieve gender diversity or uh, sustainable. So for me, the first one challenge is uh, to achieve a real sustainability. And we really need to be clear. Uh, we know that energy sector is one of the key contributors in terms of CO2 emission. We know that we have a key topic, even for renewable, about uh, waste management of batteries, waste management of panel, solar panel. So we know that we have quite a big issue, and we will have to work all together, uh, all the companies in energy sector. Uh, to address these uh, big challenges, uh, to provide uh, less CO2 emission, and also uh, to help the consumers to um, consume uh, less energy. So for me, the first challenge. Second challenge is about gender diversity. So I think that uh, all of you have uh, already uh, declared and said that we know that in the energy sector, we are only 25% of a woman, very low, and even if we have around 32% in clean energy, uh, it's only uh, most of uh, these jobs are in administrative uh, roles. So we really need to create more jobs for women. Uh, it's something very difficult uh, because today the uh, energy sector doesn't attract uh, women. So it's a key issue also for us. The third challenge is about the Middle East. Uh, I think also, because we are talking about private sector, it's quite important to understand that in the Middle East and in the GCC, 70% of the young people want to work in public sector. So meaning that, for example, in KC, in UAE, in Kuwait, you only have 15, 15% of young people that want to work for private sector. Why? Because it could be like uh, they could have uh, higher wages, uh, but also they have more benefits. And one of the bigger benefits is about uh, holidays, more holidays uh, paid. So it's quite a big challenge also that we really need uh, to understand uh, before trying to, uh, to have a specific action plan. So next slide. So for the next slide, I would uh, like to um, talk more about uh, sustainability. And I, I think, and it's really my conviction, that we need some pioneers because we have seen that the challenges are uh, huge. And we need some uh, private companies uh, that will help 
to be some pioneers because we need pioneers when something is very difficult. Uh, and it's why I'm very proud because uh, NG is one of these pioneers uh, in the energy sector. It's why I've chosen to work for this company. It's really a personal choice. Uh, so for those who don't know uh, NG, NG is an um, international worldwide energy player uh, with a lot of people all around the, the world. And um, we have the first uh, independent water and uh, power uh, production producer uh, in the Middle East, but also in a lot of other countries uh, in the world. And something very important is that we are the first energy player that have decided in 1995 to stop coal development. And I remember, because I just arrived in this company uh, during this choice, that it was a very crazy choice for a lot of people, especially for the financial market and also for our competitors that are saying you are completely crazy to exit from coal power. So it was really a choice of NG, and I think it's really in our DNA to be more sustainable. It's even now in our purpose, because you know that now for the French company, we need to have a purpose uh, that is validated uh, by our shareholders, by all the employees. And this purpose is really about uh, accelerate the transition energy to a non-carbon uh, I could say like a, a carbon neutral economy, something is very important and everyone, including our shareholders, agree on this purpose. So I think it's really now in our DNA and uh, we have done a lot of efforts about our CO2 emissions. So uh, for example, now we have reduced our CO2 uh, greenhouse uh, gas from 50% uh, since uh, 2016. Uh, and we will have we have a strong strong target uh, for 2030 uh, to continue to reduce uh, all these uh, carbon emissions. So next slide. So this is more about you know sustainability. Uh, to talk about gender diversity. So um, gender diversity is really uh, one of my uh, favorite <laughs> topic. My uh, my team know, know it. I think it's so important uh, to promote uh, women because in the world we have uh, half part is a man, half part is woman. So for me, it's something really key. And so it's why at uh, NG we really have decided to put women as a business priority. It's not something on the side. It's not something to uh, be fair. It's not something. No, it's really a business priority, and and I really thinking that it's very important. Because if we want to understand also our customers, and 50% of our customers are women, we need to have 50% of manager uh, in, uh, in NG. So we have done uh, quite a lot, and uh, we have a very, very strong target, very ambition. Uh, the target is to reach 50% of female managers uh, at NG level. Uh, so for this, we have put in place a lot big action plan so the project is named um, 50 50 uh, and so all this action plan uh, is about um, monitoring uh, but also some very specific quota because i think also that sometimes if we really want to push we need also to put uh, some uh, some quota and after when it will be done we could remove uh, this quota uh, and so i think that uh, we also pay very good attention, uh, very important attention to the uh, equality um, salary, because I think it's something very important. And so, for example, in the Middle East here, we only have 1% difference between men and women. And I hope that uh, next year it will be uh, no difference at all between the salary uh, between men and, uh, and women. Uh, and so I think that now we have results because it's a long journey as uh, you all know and we have done uh, this very big uh, strong action plan since uh, 28 um, so uh, today we have four uh, female uh, executive manager uh, at the top level uh, the executive board of uh, ng 40 percent of uh, female in our board uh, 
uh, and we are also very proud because we are the first uh, company in the CAC 40, so it's like the French listing uh, financial uh, market, uh, to have a, a CEO, a female CEO. So the first one was Isabelle Cocher. The new one is Claire Vezan. And I think it's quite important also to show uh, and to do to have like a role model for all the employees because they see that at the top of this huge company, uh, you have a woman. So I think it's quite important also uh, for us. So next slide. Next slide is more about um, what is really the role of private sector. Uh, I think that, um, you know, I really like uh, uh, when people try something very difficult. So, for example, I'm uh, so uh, um, amazed by all the people that are climbing, uh, for example, the first team that climbed uh, the Everest. Uh, so, at the beginning, it's really harsh, it's really difficult. But finally, after, when you have this kind of explorer, I could say, this kind of pioneers, after we know that a lot of people will do it again, and now we know that we have more than 4,000 people that are climbing uh, the Everest. And I think that uh, the role of the private sector is to be uh, this kind of uh, pioneers. Why? Because uh, we could have some uh, CEO that really have bold about this topic, but also could accept to fail. And I think it's something very important that we could do uh, when we are a private uh, company, and it's not so easy when you are uh, at the government level. Meaning that we need to try, we need to test, we need to learn, and after, we need to innovate uh, in the private sector. And of course, after, nothing uh, could be done without the public sector, because we need to work, I could say, like uh, act end in end. Uh, because we know that after the government are really some enablers uh, to draw the final vision uh, about gender diversity but sustainability could help also uh, the business model. So, For example, today in the energy sector in the Middle East, uh, the only things that are very important is the price, a low price. But we could ask this question, uh, is just a low price could, be, uh, could match with sustainability? It's a real question. So I think that here the government really could be a, a big enabler to help uh, the company, the private companies, to be more and more sustainable, to provide more and more jobs, especially for women. But, uh, because we all know also that we will have so many new jobs for the young people. Uh, for this new sustainable society that we have to, to build uh, together. And I think it's quite interesting, for example, you remember when Donald uh, Trump uh, decided to withdraw uh, the United States from the Paris Agreement. And you could remember that over 2,000 companies, US companies, reacted and signed this, we are still in. And finally, it was the way also to push Donald Trump to finally take care of the sustainability. And after, we will have a real very big trend all around the world. And most of the company have signed all around the world this new uh, agreement uh, we are still in. So I think it's quite important that uh, private sector also could push, even if it's not easy. Uh, and I think that for us, uh, all of us, the COVID is uh, something very good uh, because uh, we need now to build together, I could say, the green recovery. Uh, and we have seen that it's so important to work together. And, and something else is that we also, uh, and especially uh, people, rediscover uh, the importance of some jobs. I think that uh, very often we don't really care about some people that are delivering, I could say, the essential of life. And during the COVID, we have seen that the people finally rediscover all these jobs, health, food, energy, water. And I think it's good also for us because it's a way also to attract women because we know that generally 
for women to have a positive impact is something is very important. So women could be proud also to deliver, I could say, the essential of life as I am here uh, in, uh, in NG. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Florence Fontani, for such an uh, exciting uh, presentation about NG and uh, the uh, Women Empowerment Agency. Uh, after in introducing you all, allow me to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Anna Dasser, a business developer, development manager for the Corporal, and I'm honored today to be around such inspiring uh, and moderate this powerful event that is the signature uh, ceremony of a strong partnership between wise and wire. Uh, I work in renewable energies and today it's a must for us to empower women and integrate them in the clean energy sector. So let us dive in uh, in a quick panel discussion and debate. Uh, if you allow me, uh, given the short time we have left, uh, to address uh, three uh, questions to each one of you, one question per, per panelist. So Madam Habiba, let's start with you. The survey you have shared uh, today demonstrating great flexibility of women to engage in a new career and their readiness for any new adventure, uh, professional adventure. So what do you believe today wants them in the energy sector, given that it's proven that women are ready? Uh, thank you very much. This is a very uh, good uh, question. Um, I always have a very big faith in the private sector. Uh, the private sector is really the driver of economic growth in any country. The, the um, sustainable growth, the prosperity of a society lies mainly in the hands of the private uh, sector. Um, so this is one such instance where the private sector needs to step up its act, needs to come forward, needs to open up its doors, need to create special platforms to um, engage the female fresh graduates, to give them incentives, to provide an enabling environment um, so that the, the youth can be encouraged first to take STEM as a career path, to look to go into engineering and all sorts of uh, requirements to help us achieve sustainable development, uh, more so in the renewables. Uh, the more the, the private sector is prepared to invest by partnering effectively with the academic institutions, to um, uh, to ensure that what the students are being given as knowledge, as information that is being disseminated to them is exactly what is required in the market. So this is investment long term, and I hope really it is looked at it like that, that it is investment long term, and they are, we are, and they are all coming together as partners in there. The government is helping, particularly in our country, by providing the enabling environment, by encouraging, by um, uh, you know, um, speaking very uh, vocally and um, elaborately about uh, the empowerment of women and the need of empowerment of women and the need for the partnership with the private sector. So my message to the private sector is please, this is the way forward. This is where we are going to be in the, less, in the next 10 years and 15 years. So let's open new avenues of collaboration and let's us open new avenues of empowerment of the society. Really, the more women are educated in the right career uh, platform parks and, in, and enabled and empowered, the better the society will be. And when the society is stable and uh, uh, prosperous, the benefit is on uh, comes back to the companies because they will be reaping the that uh, the, the benefit of that stability um, and the prosperity of the society. Absolutely, and I'm very for such a detailed uh, and good uh, answer, uh, Aisha. Uh, recognizing that creating a culture of belonging is important. And uh, we have uh, heard your your for is strong and rightful. What what do you think can an organization uh, do to create such a culture uh, in in a short and concise way? Yeah. 
Thank you. So, I mean, there are, there are a number of different things uh, that can be done. I would approach this from a two-part perspective. So, number one is an individual perspective where I believe all of us have a responsibility to not only be aware, but to educate ourselves, call out behaviors, uh, really be a strong ally uh, when, when we see such or, uh, behaviors uh, in our environment. And from an organizational perspective, uh, I guess the only thing I would like to kind of emphasize here is, uh, you know, is the kind of importance of uh, the need for uh, accountability, and that can be done uh, through, you know, performance metrics. Uh, some of the things that Annette mentioned uh, that, e that Equal by 30 campaign is doing, uh, using diverse you as an example, uh, but really creating that culture of accountability uh, is is a really effective step for organizations uh, to move forward on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Fra, you have uh, described the, the engagement uh, through sustainability that NG have, and such engagement, of course, including gender equality and uh, women empowerment. What is the current state of the industry right now in relation to women, employed in the energy sector? Uh, how do you feel about it? Um, excuse, excuse me, could you just repeat the question because there is just like a problem with my sound so I did, didn't hear well the, the end of the sentence, excuse me. What is the current state of the industry in relation to women employed in the energy sector? How do you feel about the current situation that we see, for example, in the MENA region in the industry? Um, I, I think today it's, um, it's a difficult question. The good thing is that uh, because we will have more and more clean energy uh, and we know that clean energy will attract women, I think it's really something good. The other good news is that we will need also uh, more and more women uh, in the energy research because as you know, today the energy sector uh, has really a lot of things uh, uh, about research, um, we could talk about storage, we could talk about energy side management, we could talk about uh, carbon capture. Uh, so we have so many things, hydrogen, uh, so many things, and we know that uh, some women like uh, all this uh, uh, scientific research, I could say, so we, we could also attract them by this um, research. And um, so I think, and, this, and the third one is uh, about digitalization. Uh, I think also that we really need uh, for all the energy uh, sector more and more digitalization. It could be in the asset, uh, but it could be also for side uh, energy management. It could be also for customer solutions. Um, and so even if um, Today, it's not so, um, I think that we don't have the good level of uh, students in the digital uh, studies, especially uh, the women, but we really need to push uh, because perhaps uh, it could be a good way to attract women also in uh, all this kind of, uh, of the sector by the digitalization. So for me, digitalization, uh, research, and uh, clean energy is something quite important that could help to attract uh, women. Thank you very much, Florence. It's effectively, uh, thank you also for talking about digital. It's a very important topic. And, uh, IE and digitalization is the future together with sustainability and effectively the three collide and uh, will be, uh, of course, impacting the women empowerment. Uh, yeah. very, very you uh, as a brilliantly introducing the mentorship program. What have mentor, mentors and champions played for you over your career? It's been introducing such powerful program means that you value absolutely the role of mentor. So we would like to know uh, how, what, what that role played in your career. Oh, I think you're on mute. Thank you. Yeah, I'm off now. <laughs> I, I didn't catch the first uh, part of your question, but I think I understood where you were getting to. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I do feel that mentorship is important. And I think one of the things that we've tried to stress when we've been creating the, the mentorship program, and as I said, it is the pilot program that we're doing this year, is that uh, whilst the mentees, it's all aimed towards women in the sector, uh, the mentors 
can be of either gender because uh, we feel that we can have very strong mentors that are male or female. It shouldn't be gender specific or gender orientated. So from that perspective, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's important that we can look up to people and, you know, enjoy that support in our careers. And I would say probably uh, in my own experience, uh, my mentors have probably all been male and it's maybe because I'm probably in quite a male dominated uh, profession. Uh, I also started off my career working in the European institutions. And again, uh, a lot of the people I worked with just happened to be male, but a, a lot of them were very brilliant in what they did and, you know, really supported me in terms of what I was doing. Uh, you know, I, you're working alongside people who are quite high up in government, but they really took your advice, uh, you know, even as a young graduate. So from that perspective, that support was very important. Um, so I did benefit from a lot of mentors. I didn't necessarily benefit from a structured mentoring program, and that's what we're trying to put in place here. I think we all have a duty to act as mentors to people in our careers, uh, you know, on an ad hoc basis and on a daily basis. But I think putting in this structured program will hopefully help a lot of women come up through the ranks, and that's what we're trying to, to promote. And, and particularly in the MENA region, I think it might be helpful. And one thing we're trying as part of that is that we're offering you know, mentees the opportunity to have a mentor from a different organization. So it's outside of their own company or if in the public sector outside of their own department. And I think that's important as well because hopefully it'll give them that bit more of a confidence and that they can you know, talk about issues, talk about concerns, and that we can try and help them navigate those to come up through the ranks. Excellent, excellent. I uh, can't wait to, to see this uh, new pilot uh, up and running. This is an excellent uh, initiative. Uh, moving to Joanna, uh, effectively WIRE has uh, brilliantly as well uh, connected with governments, uh, partnership with the many uh, private companies, private sectors. And what makes us, uh, makes us very curious today is okay, we have the government and we have the commitment of many parties, but is changing the mentality at home and school a must in raising new generation and a new blood who's prone for women empowerment? So how do you see this happening? Because a challenge starts from home, even if the government's in power, even if, uh, if empowers to have such a jobs, we need to prepare uh, this, uh, as, as what Florence said, uh, about the digitalization, we need more students in there, we need women to get and engage in studying such things. So how do you see this happening? To your point, Adela, thank you very much. Um, I do believe it does start at home. Uh, my mother was a microbiology uh, or microbiologist and was working in the refineries. She was a very inspirational and empowering woman for me. And through her leadership and through her inspiration, I think that I have always been pushed uh, and to become ambitious as an individual. Um, my mom and dad raised me as an individual um, and always said to me, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman or any type of gender, I am to always look at myself as an individual that needs to succeed and continue to make a change. Um, this is why WIRE is so important and today's signing with WISE because we need to be able to provide platforms for the younger generation, as well as parents, to be able to provide them that education. So it's really, for me, it has been, again, through my mom's inspiration and empowerment that I am here today. And I really applaud her career and her leadership with me and her children. So I think with that being said again, Abla, it does start at home and it does start with being empowered by your parents. Thank you very much, Joanna, for this beautiful message. Effectively, uh, we hope that all women will be empowered at home, at school, with governments and in enterprises and by all other women uh, surrounding them. Thank you very much, ladies, for, your, for attending this event, for participating and for such a great uh, panel. Thank you and have a lovely end of day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Bye, bye. bye. Thank you very much. Really wonderful. And congratulations, both WISE and uh, WIRE. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you with everyone. You.